Hey hot rodders, it's Kent here with the backyard coop, uh, my scratch built hot rod. And I just uh, I started a couple videos on the backyard coop and I wanted to do a little walk around to show you some of the uh, major components that went into the car. Uh, it's got a Chevy 290 horse crate motor in it. It's got a 700R4 transmission and it's got a Ford Mustang 8.8 .8 differential. So I'm going to just take the camera off the tripod and then we'll, we'll get in a little closer and I'll show you some of the components that make up the car. It is 100% scratch built. It's made up of, it was built with nothing more than plywood and steel tubing and I'm going to get into uh, obviously the details about how the body was constructed later on. So yeah, it's got a 290 horse crate. It's pretty much all stock. Uh, it's got headers on it, intake and carburetor. It's got a Edelbrock 2102 cam, and I do want to change that out. It's pretty mild. I want to put a retro, retrofit roller cam in it with some different heads on it. But uh, yeah, I gotta live with what I got for right now. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's got a homemade chassis in it, two by four tubing. And it's tapered, tapered to the front. The cross member is, and it's got a Model A cross member with a transverse spring, which is pretty traditional for a hot rod suspension. And um, here I'll give you a shot from the front to see if you can see it a little better. And it's got a super super bell axle, four and a half inch drop. And it's got Chevy disc brakes. It's got the, one of those Econo kits. Uh, some chrome shocks. And it's got a few chrome goodies on it. Alternator, valve covers, air cleaner. Um, it's got standard steering, old school. Uh, Vegas steering box in it. And it's also got a Model A uh, 2829 Model A Ford grill shell in it. And it's been chopped two inches. Um, I do plan on putting a full size uh, Model A 2829 Model A rad and a grill shell in it later on. Um, Yeah, so the headlight buckets are from Speedway Motors. I actually got quite a few parts from Speedway. Um, I live in Canada and uh, Speedway, even though it's cross-border shipping, they have a lot of really good traditional hot rod parts I really like, uh, that I really liked and needed for my car. Um, yeah, so it's got an aluminum firewall, 1 8, one eighth inch aluminum uh, sheet on the firewall. Uh, traditional manual brakes. Um, you can see part of the chassis there. It's made a 2x4 two, two tubing, tapered out to the front. And also Speedway um, radius rods. And also Speedway headers. Uh, ceramic headers. And the wheels on the car are chrome reverse style. I forget where I got those. Front and rear. And, and the rear has the little center caps on them. The spider, spider caps, I think, they, I think they call them. <laughs> so this car was built, um, when I built it I kind of was copying the overall theme of the little coupe in American Graffiti. You can see how the bob fenders are kind of similar and of course the motorcycle style front fenders similar to American Graffiti I was going to paint it straight yellow but then I I did some kind of 60s style uh, panel painting I guess they used to call it with a little bit of metal flake in it I don't know 
You either love it or you hate it, I guess, but it's what I ended up with. It's bright anyway. <laughs> and yeah, so I'll just give you a little shot of the interior. It's got suicide doors. And suicide doors with uh, just a simple weld on hinges. They actually work really good. <laughs> And it's got um, tea bucket, tea bucket, um, uh, what do you call, latches on it. And they actually work really good. The doors actually shut really good. And the door handles are just utility cabinet chrome door handles. I didn't want to spend the extra money on. Uh, Actual Model A or 32 Ford door handles is about, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that. And going on into the interior, you can see it's painted black, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the, the steel uh, tubing that's used on the door frame. And the outside here is wood because this, this car was built with a steel inner structure and the rest of it was made out of wood. Uh, seats are homemade, just simple seats made out of plywood and some foam and some uh, cheap vinyl. It's got a rear deck with a couple of speakers in it. And um, here I'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna get a light to do the inside so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, yeah, so this car was scratch built, so I ended up getting a assigned VIN number. It's under the classification of a U-built. And they give me a, st a special um, uh, VIN number that they, that they attach to the car themselves through insurance. It was, it was uh, insured originally in the province of British Columbia in Canada. And I live in Alberta now. So I'm just going to grab a light. Okay, so back to the interior. Um, custom dash made out of aluminum. Got a speedometer, a tachometer, and all the gauges, oil pressure, voltage. Uh, fuel gauge, temp gauge. I kind of set it up like a, ra a little bit of a race car, so it's got like a master switch with a push button starter. And then it's got fuel, fan, and auxiliary. And it's got a heater, it's got wipers. And it's got a little, you can see it there on the top of the dash. It's a homemade defrost just to keep the window clear on the colder mornings. I needed that for um, to pass ins inspection. And you can see the, the roof, you can see the, um, the steel tubing reinforced on the roof. And then the car has all been skinned with aircraft plywood, like for the roof skin and the door skin and the and the trunk lid and all that. And it's got a B&M uh, shifter in it. Dimmer switch, brake, throttle. And um, yeah, so I'm going to move around to the back of the car. I just wish this camera had a little wider angle on it. 
Other than that, it works good, but it's kind of hard to fit a lot of things in unless you got a lot of room. So yeah, and then it's got, uh, oh yeah, the front fenders, the motorcycle fenders are scratch built. I built them out of, made them out of aluminum, just on a cheap English wheel. Um, it was kind of a learn as I went process. Uh, the rear fenders are 32 Ford fiberglass, and I just trimmed them up and bobbed them a little bit. Homemade rear bumper. Um, it's got Pontiac tail lights. And it's got the catchphrase from the movie on the trunk. Um, for those of you guys who have seen the movie, where were you in 62? American Graffiti again. <laughs> and again, a chrome utility handle, cabinet handle just for the trunk lid. And let's have a look inside the trunk. Okay, so we'll have a look inside the trunk. Um, I have a nice little hydraulic uh, prop rod to hold the trunk open, but it just gave up on me here the other day. So I use this uh, piece of wood for right now, but anyway. Um, it's got a homemade gas tank. I think it's about a 16 gallon. And it does have a fuel gauge that works. And a vent. And I'll try to show you some of the suspension. Um, it's got a home. It's got a homemade um, rear cross member. And it's got a old school style transverse spring. And homemade ladder bars. Can't really see a whole lot in there, but I'm going to show you maybe an undercar shot. So there is the transverse spring, homemade shackles. Uh, it's a Ford 8.8 8 .8 diff out of a Mustang, which are very readily available. And you can see a little bit of the rest of the car. The rest of the suspension, I should say. I got a little bit of an oil puddle over there. My transmission had a leak in it, and I got to fix that, so... Anyway, um, anyway, so that's about it for the walk around. Um, so last but not least is the body. Um, it is a wooden body with a steel inner structure. Um, the paint that I used on this car, um, it wasn't the greatest paint. It was that dupla color. You get in the pre premixed quartz, they're all ready to spray. Uh, it's that old school lacquer stuff. <laughs> it is pretty cheap paint, and you got to use a lot of it. And the only thing I'll say about it is it was good in the sense that it's lacquer and it dries real quick. And for a novice painter like I am, for sure, it was uh, really user friendly. And it also, and they've also got some candy colors that you can fool around with which I kind of made up my own custom colors and then I added some metal flake to it which I wouldn't have, wouldn't have probably been able to do without spending 10 times the amount of time like with a real paint but I definitely on my next uh, on the project backyard coop that I'm building when it's finished I'm definitely going to use some real um, real urethane paint or maybe a base clear but uh, it was it was a good learning curve and it was it was relatively easy to use. Like I say, the lacquer dries so fast, it's, it's good that way for a beginner. Yeah, so that's about it for the walk around. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.